Okay, so as promised, here's a slightly more complicated reaction to balance. Um, it's starting with permanganate, which is a beautiful purple pink color that you make in chapter 11. And oxalate ion, no cool colors there, but it is pretty fun to say. Um, it says it's in acidic solution, which is going to become important later on, and it forms CO2 bubbles, so that tells me it's a gas, and a pale pink MN2+. So these are the bare bones part of our reaction, just translating the words into the chemical formulas. Our next step in our list is balance, number one, balance atoms except oxygen and hydrogen. So again, we are ignoring oxygen and hydrogen until literally the very end. So I just wanna make sure that like MN, I have one on the left, one on the right. Carbon, I have two on the left and only one on the right. So I'm gonna stick a coefficient in there. Now I have two carbon. Um, everything else is oxygen, so I'm ignoring it. So it's just adding a coefficient of CO2 to balance that carbon out. Cool. The next thing is I wanna balance the oxygen by adding as many water as I need to. All right, so everything above this line is like review. We've done this part before. Everything below this line is a little different. So instead of trying, it would be impossible really to try and get all the hydrogens and oxygens balanced out. You have eight on this side and two on this side. And if you increase this one, you end up changing the number of carbons, which means you change, there's just no way to do it. Don't try. <laughs> it's madness. Instead, we are literally just going to count oxygens and add as many waters as we need. And the reason is we are assuming all of our redox reactions are done in the presence of water as the solvent. Okay, so we have four oxygens here and four oxygens here, so I have eight on the left. I have two times two, so I have four on the right. So I'm deficient. I need four more on the right. I will put them in as water. Now I have eight of them. It's much easier this way than going back and forth. It's just that you're gonna have to fight your habit of wanting H and O to balance right away. You have to realize we can add as much water and as much acid as we need to. The next step, as I said, add as much water and as much acid. So we're going to balance the hydrogen by putting H plus on whichever side needs it. So over here we have no hydrogen and then on the right we end up with eight of them. So we'll just add eight hydrogen Whoops. with a plus. Now we have eight um, on both sides, so that's balanced, right? Yeah. It says, if the solution is basic, we got more work to do, but this problem says acidic solution. That's why it says that, because uh, I don't have to worry about converting from H plus to OH minuses. So the, now we're going to look at the electrons. This is where we need to know oxidation states. All right, so we go through, and none of these are elements. I don't see any elements. Um, I do have rules for oxygen. Always minus two. This is a monatomic ion, so its charge is its oxidation state. Um, and I'm gonna have to calculate carbon and manganese, oh, and hydrogen's a plus one all the time. Yep. So for the manganese calculation, we'll say four times negative two plus whatever MN is, it's gonna be equal to the charge, which is negative one. So we're gonna add eight to both sides and you get MN is plus seven over there. Uh, here, this carbon, same kind of deal there. So we're gonna say two carbon this time plus four oxygen equals the charge. Don't forget the coefficient because it'll mess everything up. So we have two carbons plus negative eight equals negative two. So I'll add eight to both sides, which means we get to six. So each carbon is worth three. 
Over here, same kind of deal for that carbon, except uh, it's minus two times two plus whatever carbon is, and it equals zero. You'll notice when we're doing oxidation states, the coefficient has nothing to do with it. It's just subscripts and charges that matter. Uh, so carbon equals four there. Uh, so that's it. Okay, so I'm going to have to erase some of the math. Um, I hope you have a lot of scrap paper for balancing redox reactions. I find it helpful to turn the page sideways. Uh, I also found it helpful when I was in college to use a whiteboard for all this because I'm less afraid of messing it up. You can also download things like Google Jamboard. You can download and use the whiteboard app that way. Or I also like Microsoft PowerPoint has one kind of built into it. And Microsoft Whiteboard is pretty good as well. So uh, it's frequently easier to feel like you can change things as you go along when you can erase easily. So you might try out some of those apps. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna look for what's changing, right? And so I see that H plus on this side is the same as H plus on that side. And then goes from seven plus to two plus. So I have to think about that. Manganese is plus seven and it ends up plus two. So that means to go from seven to two, we had to gain five negative charges. So gaining electrons is reduction. So this was reduced. Okay. And then I keep looking, uh, oxygen's minus two all the way around. Carbon, oh, carbon goes from plus three to plus four. To do that, to go more positive, I have to get rid of an electron. So you'll notice seven plus negative five adds up to two. Three equals four plus negative one. So these charges add up correctly on both sides. Um, that's a reduction, oh, sorry. It's losing electrons, so it's oxidation. So it is oxidized. Good, so we have one thing reduced, one thing oxidized, as we would expect. However, I noticed that carbon only produced one electron. So I go back to my equation and I take a look at it and I realize, oh, this is actually C2O4 and it's gonna make two CO2. So really that's gonna make two electrons, not just one. But that still doesn't work out because I have five in the manganese reduction. So the only way to balance the charge here is to multiply by a common factor. So five and two, well, they are their common factors. So if I multiply MN by two, and if I multiply the carbon by five, we end up with 10 electrons being transferred all, all, all together. I'm just distributing my two. So two MN plus sevens, 10 electrons and it's going to produce two mn2 pluses and then for the carbonate we're going to go 5c2o4 and it's going to produce 10 co2s plus 5 times 2 is 10 electrons so this is what we need we need the electrons to be the same in both the reduction and the oxidation okay so we go back to our original reaction um, and we're just going to put them together. So if we have two MN7 plus, I need two of these things. And I'm going to produce two of these. And I need five oxalic acids and I'm going to produce 10, not two, so I'll erase that. I'm going to produce 10 CO2s. Okay, so that takes into account everything. And the last step is always a final double check. So sometimes when we balance the charge, oxygens and hydrogens get messed up. It's okay. You just want to go back and add in the appropriate numbers of water or hydrogen ion after you're done. A lot of us hesitate to do that, to, to you know, 
put a five in front of here because you know it's going to mess up your oxygen, but don't worry about it. It's okay. All right, so let's just do another double check, right? So I have, um, I like to start with metals. I have two manganese on the left, two manganese on the right. I have carbon, so I've got 10 carbon, five times two, and I've got 10 carbon. So far, so good. Um, in deciding which one to do next, oxygen or hydrogen, I'm going to go oxygen because it's the most complicated in this example. So we have two times four, so that's eight, plus we have five times four, so that's another 20. So 28 altogether on the left. On the right, we have 10 times two plus four times one. So we end up with 24. So I actually need four more to get to 28. I need four more. So that's going to come over here. I had four, now I'll have eight. OK. And so now that's balanced. And then finally, hydrogen. I just messed hydrogen up, so I know I'm going to change it. Eight times two is 16 on the right. I only have eight over here, so I'll go 16. I know these coefficients are big and therefore maybe a little bit worrisome for some of us. Don't sweat it. Just realize that uh, we got a lot of charges moving around, plus seven to plus two for your manganese. That's big. And so that means that we're going to have to, we're going to have to have a fairly large number of molecules involved to do it. Okay.